Hello and welcome back uh, to this new series on the application of D, uh, Python for DH. Shortly after I posted my last video, which was on how to create this kind of delete function right here, somebody on Twitter asked if it was possible to edit something in this JSON file in the terminal. And the answer is yes, it is possible. And we're going to do that in this video. Uh, what we're going to do is we are going to uh, first kind of go through and edit up our choices like we did in the last one. We're going to put this right here and we're going to create this and make it number four. We're going to call it edit data and then we're going to make number five exit. And this is going to mean that we have to edit this down here as well. So let's go ahead and make LF break is going to be that and LF4 is going to call a function that we're going to make in just a second called edit data. And now what we're going to do is we're going to just jump right in and start making our edit data function. Let's give ourselves some, a little bit of space. Def edit data. And what we're going to do is we are going to do something I don't recommend and we are going to copy and paste some, some stuff here. So what I want you to do is go up to our delete data function and we're going to just copy in pretty much all of this. Paste it right there under our edit data. Uh, and again, I don't recommend copying and pasting in code, but in this video series, I'm kind of just showing you what each of these functions are going to do uh, step by step without creating um, extra functions here. So what we are going to do is we're going to leave pretty much all of this the exact same. Uh, the main thing that we are going to change is we're going to change uh, this delete option. We're going to change it to edit option, and we are going to uh, change this delete option right here to edit option. And all we're doing is just changing the object name here so it doesn't look like the same thing as delete option up there. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to once again copy and paste some other information. We're going to copy and paste this stuff down here from our view data function. And I'm going to explain that in just a second. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at this function. It's going to do the exact same thing our delete option did, our delete function. And when it gets to, uh, you're going to allow the user to prompt and enter in a, uh, a number zero to the length of the data uh, in here. And what they're going to do is they're going to say which one of these they want to actually edit. And instead of passing over it like we did before, and so we could delete something from a list, we're going to get rid of that. And we're going to simply copy and paste all that stuff in from our view data right here and uh, down here. And instead of, we don't really need this index number anymore. What we're going to say is current name of king, current begin of reign, and current end of reign. And now what we need to do is we need to prompt the user to actually change this information. So what we're going to say is name is equal to input. And we're going to say, uh, what would you like the new name to be? And uh, this will allow the user to type something in. And we're going to do the same thing here with, uh, with begin. What would you like the new begin to be? And end. What would you like the new end to be? And what this is going to do is it's going to change these objects in memory. So they are going to correspond instead to of this information here to whatever the user has inputted. And then all we got to do now is simply uh, add that to our new data dot append. And what we're going to do, there's a couple ways we could have done this. I'm going to do this the longer way because I think it's nice to see it written out. In polished coding, you would not do it like I'm doing right now. You would simply uh, change it in the current existing dictionary and then append it back to new data. But we're going to do it the long way. And we're going to say begin is going to be have a value of begin. And end is going to have a value of end. And so now what we have is the ability to iterate across all of this information uh, and then change it in memory. And the user should be able to do everything the way we intend. So we go up here, we run the program, and we've got, we can view the data, and you can now also edit the data. So what do we want to change? Let's say I want to change number one, which is this Charles here. So I'm going to select one. Hmm. 
Why have you not worked? <laughs> oh, okay, there we go. I didn't save the, uh, the actual Python file. So I accidentally deleted uh, one of the items over here. So let's go ahead and go through and, and, and actually do this now. Uh, so what, what I want to do is I want to change this Charlemagne one right now. And so I'm going to uh, change his name from Charlemagne to, let's just say, Bob. Why not? And we're going to change his range from 1231 to 452. And we're going to change that to 234. And as you saw over here in real time, it automatically updated. And we can still do things like add data. Let's add Charlemagne back in. One, two, three, four. And one, two, one. Eh, that doesn't even make sense. Now we see him over here. Now we can edit as well. Let's go back and edit Bob. And we can change Bob uh, to Charles too. And make uh, his thing now. It doesn't matter. There we go. Uh, but we, what you see here is the ability now for the user to update the data that it currently exists in it. And the way they're going to be able to do that is by simply editing the data and they can read it here because it's got the index number and all the information that corresponds to them and they can select the one that they actually want to edit in terminal. So hopefully you found this video useful for figuring out how to edit an existing JSON file in a terminal. And what's nice about this method is that if you've got a, a huge JSON file, people don't have to go through and read a JSON file at all. You can kind of prompt them all in terminal and make it look a little bit nicer. That's going to be it for this video, though. Uh, please do like and subscribe down below. And if there's something you want to see in the future, let me know about it and I'll make a video on it. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe down below and visit us at pythonhumanities.com.